Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So an elephant said to the camel, Why have you got your breasts on your back? Do you know how ridiculous you look? Well, says the camel, I think that's a bloody stupid question from somebody with their prick on their face. <laughs> so the mafia leader asks his right hand man if he would do anything he says. The guy says he'll do anything for his boss. Okay then, take this plastic cup, go into the bathroom, jerk off, and bring it out. Unsure of what's going on, the right-hand man goes into the bathroom, jerks off into the plastic cup, and comes out. The mafia leader says, good, good. Now do it again. Don't forget to bring it out. The mafia leader hands him a new cup. So the guy goes back into the bathroom and does the same thing. He walks out tired with much less in the cup than the first time. This routine goes on for three more times. The mafia leader sees this and says, very good, very good. Do it one last time. He hands him a new cup and the guy goes back into the bathroom. The guy is barely able to walk and drags himself out of the bathroom. He comes out and there's hardly a tiny drop in the cup. The mafia leader now says, all right, Paulie, now I want you to take my daughter to the movies and bring her back. <laughs> so two men are approaching each other on a pavement. Both are dragging their right foot as they walk, as they meet. One man looks at the other knowingly, points to his foot and says, Iraq, 1991. The other points his thumb behind him and says, Dog poop, 20 feet back. <laughs> so Amy, a blonde Texas city girl, marries a Texas rancher. One morning, on his way out to check on the cows, the rancher says to Amy, the insemination man is coming over to impregnate one of our cows today. I drove a nail into the two by four just above the cow's stall in the barn. You show him where the cow is when he gets here, okay? So the rancher leaves for the fields. After a while, the artificial insemination man arrives and knocks on the front door. Amy takes him down to the barn. They walk along the row of cows and when she sees the nail, she tells him, this is the one right here. Terribly impressed by what he seemed to think just might be another ditzy blonde, the man asks. Tell me, little lady, how did you know this is the cow to be bred? That simple. By the nail over its stall, Amy explains very confidently. Then the man asks, what's the nail for? She turns to walk away and with complete confidence says, I guess it's to hang your pants on. <laughs> so an attorney got home late one evening after a very taxing day, trying to get a stay of execution for a client, James Wright, who was due to be hanged for murder at midnight. His last minute plea for clemency to the governor had failed and he was feeling worn out and depressed. As soon as he got through the door at home, his wife started on him about, what time of night do you call this? Where have you been? And on and on, too shattered to play his usual role in this familiar ritual. He went and poured himself a shot of whiskey and headed off for a long, hot soak in the tub, pursued by the predictable, sarcastic remarks. While he was in the bath, the phone rang. The wife answered and was told that her husband's client had been granted his stay of execution after all. Finally, realizing what a day he must have had, she decided to go upstairs to give him the good news. As she opened the bathroom door, she was greeted by the sight of her husband's rear end as he was bent over naked, drying his legs and feet. They're not hanging right tonight, she said. He whirled around and screamed, for crying out loud, woman, will you ever stop? <laughs> so there were three men in a hot air balloon, 
a priest, an Aussie, and a member of the army. The hot air balloon started to go down, so they all agreed they had to throw some things out each to lighten the load. So the priest goes and throws out some candles. The other two reply, why'd you do that? To which he replied, oh, I have plenty of them from where I come from. So the Australian goes and throws out some kangaroos. The other two reply, why'd you do that? To which he replied, oh, I have plenty of them from where I come from. So then the army member goes and throws out some bombs. The other two asked, why'd you do that? To which he replied, oh, I have plenty of them from where I come from. Well, they land and a short while later, they are walking down the street and they see a man crying. They ask why he is crying, to which he replies, Oh, I've just been hit by flying candles. So they continue on and come across another man crying, so they ask why he is crying, to which he replies, Oh, I've just been hit by flying kangaroos. So they keep walking down the street and they come across a man laughing hysterically, so they ask why he is laughing. His response was, I just farted and my house blew up behind me. <laughs> so a blind man walks into a hardware store, picks up his guide dog, and starts swinging him around by the tail. The shopkeeper asks, Can I help you, sir? The man says, Nah, I'm just having a look around. <laughs> So a fellow decides to take off early from work and go drinking. He stays until the bar closes at 2 a.m., at which time he is extremely drunk. When he enters his house, he doesn't want to wake anyone, so he takes off his shoes and starts tiptoeing up the stairs. Halfway up the stairs, he falls over backwards and lands flat on his rear end. That wouldn't have been so bad, except that he had a couple of empty pint bottles in his back pockets, and they broke, and the broken glass carved up his buttocks terribly. But he was so drunk that he didn't know he was hurt. A few minutes later, as he was undressing, he noticed blood, so he checked himself out in the mirror, and sure enough, his behind was cut up something terrible. Well, he repaired the damage as best he could under the circumstances, and he went to bed. The next morning, his head was hurting, and his rear was hurting, and he was hunkering under the covers, trying to think up some good story, when his wife came into the bedroom. Well, you really tied one on last night, she said. Where'd you go? I worked late, he said, and I stopped off for a couple of beers. A couple of beers? That's a laugh, she replied. You got plastered last night. Where the heck did you go? What makes you so sure I got drunk last night anyway? Well, she replied. My first big clue was when I got up this morning and found a bunch of band-aids stuck to the mirror. <laughs> so a young courting couple are out for a romantic walk along a leafy country lane. They walk hand in hand and, as they stroll, the young man's lustful desire rises to a peak. He is just about to get frisky when the young woman says, I hope you don't mind, but I really do need to have a piss. Slightly taken aback by this vulgarity, he suggests she go behind a hedge. She nods in agreement and disappears behind the hedge. As he waits, he can hear the sound of the white panties sliding down voluptuous legs, and he imagines what loveliness is being exposed. Unable to contain his animal thoughts a moment longer, he reaches through a gap in the foliage, touches her smooth, bare leg. He gently brings his hand further up to her thigh, until suddenly, and with great astonishment, he finds himself gripping a long, thick appendage hanging between her legs. He gasps in horror. My God, Mary, have you changed your gender? No, she replies. I've changed my mind. I'm having a poo instead. 
So my girlfriend and I have always had a great relationship and dreamed of having kids together. But recently, she has become more and more distant and irritable. Lately, she has been going out late at night and coming home even later. Whenever she gets home, she says she comes by taxi. But yet, I have never seen the taxi out front. I've been getting suspicious, but I'm too afraid to confront her about it. So the other night I decided to see for myself. When it got to the time she always comes home, I crept outside to see who she was coming with. A strange car turned into the street, with a man driving and my girlfriend as a passenger. I crouched behind the boot of my car to avoid being seen, which is when I noticed some rust on the wheel arch. So naturally, I wanted to ask all of you, what is the best way to remove the rust before it gets worse? <laughs>